here are important guidelines to keep in mind as you embrace the challenges of online classes. 1. Set up a good working space. It is important that the place is quiet, clear and free from distractions. 2. Make yourself look good online. Wear clothes the way you do when you go to school for in-person classes. 3. Have a respectful tone. When communicating with your teachers and classmates, observe a certain level of formality. Use respectful greetings and signatures like Good morning, Mr. Dow, Hi, Ms. Taylor, Please and Thank you. 4. Be kind and be professional. Make it a point to be respectful in your comments even if you disagree with others. Conduct yourself in an online class with the same respect, politeness, and professionalism that you would exhibit in a real-life classroom. 5. Properly use your webcam and microphone. It's good to show your face to give the impression that you're actively engaged with the lesson. Turn your microphone off when your teacher or others are speaking. This will eliminate background noise that can be distracting. 6. Properly use the chat box. Don't post irrelevant remarks. Instead, use the chat box to clarify misconceptions or share great ideas you have about the topic at hand. Don't yell by typing in all caps. In most situations, typing in all caps is perceived as inappropriate. 7. Always make an effort to use proper punctuation, spelling, and grammar. Observing these ensures clear expression of your thoughts or ideas. 8. Make sure to submit your assignments the proper way. Knowing how to properly submit your work online is key to your success as an online student. 9. Take time to read. When asked to comment on a post, take some time to read through each of the previous discussion post responses before writing your own response. And 10. Think before you type. What you share in an online classroom becomes part of a digital record. I hope that you observe these guidelines to help you in your online learning. May you have a wonderful school year. Uh oh, a happy and blessed day class. I hope you'll find everything today well. I'm Sir Aaron John F. Cortez, your English teacher. Today, I'll take you to the world of fun and excitement as we go along to our learning journey. So, fasten your seatbelts. In this learning session, all you need to do is to sit and watch as we gradually unfold all the learning tasks which you will surely enjoy while learning at the same time. Your module for week number 5 has something to do with using parallel structures. At the end of this module, you are expected to number 1. Formulate meaningful sentences with parallel structure and number 2. Analyze structures of sentences. So what are you waiting for? 
get hold on your modules, paper, and ball pen. Together, we will unravel all the learning tasks which you will surely enjoy while learning at the same time. Now, it's time for us to measure or gauge our prior knowledge about the topic using the activity from what I know. For your pre-assessment, read the following sentences and write the word parallel on your answer sheet if the sentence observed parallelism, or write non-parallel if otherwise. You will be given one minute to do this task, and your timer starts now. Okay, time's up. Let us now check your answers. High five for a job well done. Striking a balance does not only apply with time and life, it is also applied in the use of the language. In the past, you may have come across the word parallel. The dictionary defines parallel as a way in which things are similar like a shared quality or characteristic. Your keywords are similar and equal. Let us now look back from your previous lesson using the What's In activity. For your what's in activity, arrange the steps in proper hand washing by choosing the correct word inside the box. Then, write the steps to form the coherent paragraph. Use the illustrations below as your guide in answering the activity. Do this on your answer sheet. You'll be given one minute to do this task, and your timer starts now. Time's up! You really amaze me with your ideas. Since your answers from these activities may vary, evaluation and checking will also be done right after this video. Good job, class! You are absolutely fantastic! Are you now ready and excited? To get motivated with the next learning task? If so, let's get started! For your What's New activity, consider the following images. 
What do they have in common? You'll be given one minute to analyze these pictures. And your timer starts now. Time's up! You really amazed me with your ideas. Since your answers from these activities may vary, evaluation and checking will also be done right after this video. Good job, class! You are absolutely fantastic! Smile and learn! Hello, friends! How are you doing? I'm sure you've heard about the coronavirus. Do you know what it is? Sure you do! Everyone is talking about it! I've looked up information about what we know so far to explain it to you. Although there are still many doubts to be solved. COVID-19 is a disease caused by a virus which belongs to the family of coronavirus. This virus is the one that caused a pandemic in 2020. A pandemic is a new disease that spreads all over the world and affects many people. So far, we have observed that this virus can spread very easily via vectors like objects we have touched through sneezing or coughing. This can cause many people to get sick during the process of transmission. That's why the disease has spread worldwide. As you know, the important thing now is to look after ourselves and others. That's why many measures have been taken. To avoid the spreading of the virus, it is advisable to follow some hygiene standards. Wash your hands very often or use hydroalcoholic gel. Did you know that this way the material that envelops the virus is broken? If this material is broken, the virus can't infect the cells. Be careful with the objects you touch, and avoid touching your face. Keep a safe distance from others to protect yourself and them. If you use a mask, be careful not to touch it once you've put it on. The mask should cover your mouth and nose. Cough or sneeze into your elbow. Research is very important to be able to solve all our doubts. Moreover, we should thank all those people who are working and helping so that we can get back to normal. Would you like to be a superhero? Follow all prevention measures to protect yourself. If you're not feeling well, let your parents or teachers know. You may have to stay at home to feel better and protect others. If you have doubts or feel nervous, talk to your family or teachers. They can surely help you. Let us now dig deeper about the topic using what is it. Parallel structure means using the same pattern of words to show that two or more ideas have the same level of importance. There must be a balance of two or more words, phrases, or clauses in a sentence. When a writer is presenting a series of equally important details in a sentence, he or she should try to make the item balanced or parallel. When the sentences are presented in different forms, they are non-parallel, and the resulting sentence is not smooth.
Let us now consider the following sentences. Number one, we enjoy reading novels, collecting stamps, and to play tennis. The sentence is not parallel because two Durant phrases, reading novels and collecting stamps, are mixed with an infinitive phrase to play tennis. In order to make all the elements of the sentence parallel, to play tennis could be changed into Durant phrase. And it goes like this. We enjoy reading novels, collecting stamps, and playing tennis. Remember that one of the fundamental rules of our language is that similar ideas should be expressed in similar grammatical structures. When we want to talk about a series of things, qualities, ideas, problems, processes, or feelings, we combine a word with a word, a phrase with a phrase, or a clause with a clause. Now, let's talk about parallel words. When a writer lists a series of words, the words in the series should be all nouns, all adjectives, all adverbs, but not mixed. For instance, the celebrity was charming, witty, and a beauty. Charming and witty are adjectives. However, beauty is a noun. For the sentence to be parallel, beauty must be in adjective form. And it goes like this. The celebrity was charming, witty, and beautiful. Next, we have the parallel phrases. When a writer lists a series of phrases, all the phrases should be the same. All gerund phrases, all infinitive phrases, all participial phrases, or all prepositional phrases. For instance, she aimed to study, to travel, and someday having a family. The sentence is non-parallel because two infinitive phrases, which is to study, and to travel are mixed with the gerund phrase having a family. For the sentence to be parallel, having a family could be changed into an infinitive. And it goes like this. She aimed to study, to travel, and to have a family. Next, we have the parallel clauses. When a writer lists a series of clauses, all the clauses in the series should be the same. They should all be noun clauses, all adjective clauses, or all adverb clauses. For instance, what we say and the things that we do are never quite the same. What we say is a noun clause. The things that we do is a noun followed by an adjective clause. In order to make the elements of the sentence parallel, the things that we do could be changed into a noun clause. And it goes like this. What we say and what we do are never quite the same. Now, it's time for us to explore more about the lesson we discussed using the What's More activities. Now that parallelism has been introduced and discussed with you, are you now ready to take on the activities specifically provided for you? If so, let's get going. For your independent activity number one, read the sentences carefully and check if the sentences have parallel structures. If the structure is parallel, write correct on your answer sheet. If the structure is not parallel, change the underlined word to make the sentence parallel. For your independent activity number two, rewrite the sentences to improve faulty parallelism. Do this on your answer sheet. And lastly, for your independent activity number three, Fill in the blanks with a word or phrase to complete the sentence. Be mindful of the structure of the sentence. Do this on your answer sheet. You'll be given 
one minute to do all this task. And your timer starts now. Time's up! You really amazed me with your ideas. Since your answers from these activities may vary, evaluation and checking will also be done right after this video. It is now time for us to reflect about your learnings using the What I Have Learned activities. For your What I Have Learned activity, recall what you have learned. Put a check mark if the statement is true and cross it out if otherwise. Do this on your answer sheet. You'll be given one minute to do this task and your timer starts now. Time's up! You really amazed me with your ideas. Since your answers from these activities may vary, evaluation and checking will also be done right after this video. Let us now put everything into actions with What I Can Do. For your What I Can Do activity, complete the following sentences using appropriate word or phrase to form a parallel structure. You'll be given one minute to do this task and your timer starts now. Time's up! You really amazed me with your ideas. Since your answers from these activities may vary, evaluation and checking will also be done right after this video. It is now time to evaluate your overall learning about the topic with the use of your final assessment. 
For your final assessment, complete the following sentences by choosing the correct word or phrase from the given choices. Write the letter of the correct answer on your answer sheet. You'll be given one minute to do this task and your timer starts now. Time's up! You really amazed me with your ideas. Since your answers from these activities may vary, evaluation and checking will also be done right after this video. For your assignment, write something inspirational for your friends to keep them going in this time of pandemic. Make sure to check the structure of your sentences. Write at least three to five sentences with three or more parallel structures. Use the rubric below. And that's all for today. I hope you'll learn and enjoy about this session. Thank you for your cooperation. Till next time, bye!